Hello, friends. It's Miss Patty at Samuels Public Library, and this is our time for aspiring artists. And I'm really excited um, to share with you all that I've been learning about marvelous mosaics. So mosaics are a very special form of art that's been around for thousands of years. And I made a little mosaic that you can see in the background of a turtle. And so you might ask, what is a mosaic? A mosaic is a pattern or an image that you might make uh, using pieces of stone or glass or ceramic tiles, usually in history. But today, for our purposes, we'll be using paper. And you, even with paper, you can uh, come up with some really fun designs. So that's what we'll be doing today. And um, usually, uh, when the mosaics were made through history, and even today, they are uh, use a special glue called mortar uh, to cover the surface to hold the tiles in place. And frequently through history and even in modern times, these beautiful mosaics cover big walls or floors. And so um, it's a little bit like a puzzle. You're puzzling the pieces and you plan it kind of like a puzzle. So here's our friend little train and all these shapes puzzle together to make the picture. Now this is a simplified version and you just wait till I show you some of the amazing complicated puzzles that are mosaics from ancient history. So let me, I'm going to put you um, on uh, slide sharing, we're going to share so that I can show you the history of mosaics. So if you look um, at our wonderful uh, background here, you've got all kinds. This is like a scene. If you can step back and kind of look at this, you've got um, all the glowing sky here, almost like a sunset on the horizon, and the sun going down, and uh, then maybe uh, a river, some hills, and a river, and earth, and a footpath. So this is all different parts. There's uh, tile, all cut, and stone. Uh, so mosaics are so interesting and just from all these little pieces they have been planned so well to make a picture. So let's look at a little history. Step back thousands of years ago and this is a picture of children. Children ancient Rome, uh, a decoration, but what's really cool is that these uh, mosaics have been preserved because they're stone. They've withheld the test of time. And so we can see what a child thousands of years ago in Rome or Greece would have worn. Does this like any, look like any clothes you have? And we also get to see um, the birds and Mr. Rooster and I believe he's Mr. Pheasant, and uh, it just gives you an idea of what um, uh, flowers and fruit. I'm guessing, and I could be wrong, but I'm guessing this might be fig and, um, and a creepy worm. <laughs> so let me show you so we can learn a lot about history from these slides. And remember, this is a, a picture, a mosaic of King Alexander the Great um, uh, thousands of years ago. So what's kind of fascinating, if you just look and just think for a little bit, what are you looking at? What are you seeing? So obviously, I think it looks like they're headed into battle. 
And that's what King Alexander was famous for, was being um, quite the general in battle, and very brave. And uh, he has uh, another soldier that has a helmet. King Alexander doesn't have a helmet. And he's got a beautiful horse that's all decorated and has his armor on as well. And this looks like some pretty hefty armor that King Alexander's wearing. But just remember that if we were to look up really close, all these pieces are little bits of stone or tile that tell a story, an important time in history. So this is of. Emperor Justinian. And again, remember, this is all these tiny pieces of stone or tile, all pulled together like a puzzle to make an amazing picture. So you can see this is Emperor Justinian. And he was called that because he uh, pulled together the code of uh, Justin, he has a, a code of law that he's famous for bringing about. So he looks pretty uh, impressive. You can tell he's wealthy with the robes and his jeweled crown. And um, he's kind of got an aura around him that says he's pretty special. And then these are all of his uh, like his cabinet members or his assistants in his government. Perhaps these are his soldiers because they've got the spears and the beautiful big um, armor, shield. And all of these are symbols of uh, important, uh, that will tell us important things about these people with Justinian. And here's a slide that shows you up close the mosaic. So you see all these little pieces and the artist knows exactly how to highlight to make it look like real skin and uh, shadows under his neck and um, his very large brooch that has big jewels on it. Yeah, so it's really interesting and amazing. So here's, here's one that's kind of fun. Yeah, maybe they had pet cats. So this one is similar time, but look how in the world they made it. So he looks fuzzy. Isn't that amazing? And it looks like he's um, going to eat a fish. I don't know. I guess cats like fish, huh? Here's another one that tells us a little bit about long ago. We have a bunny and these are, can you guess? Yes, grapes and grape vine. So that tells you that was important and part of their diet and that even where they lived in Italy and Greece, they had bunnies just like we do. And fish, lots of fish, because those areas have water all around them. And there's some interesting fish here that you might recognize. And then there's some crazy octopus and a squid. And all kind. ooh, looks like the octopus is eating something. I don't know. Maybe an eel. Does he look like an eel? Yeah. So fish was a big part of their diet too. And that's apparently very healthy for you. Can you guess who these are? These are famous soldiers of long ago called gladiators. And this is how they are equipped to fight pretty uh, challenging battles and they needed all the armor they could get. All right. And this is one um, moving forward 
fairly recent. It's just maybe uh, a little over 100 years old, and it resides in Philadelphia. And you can even see this Gala Placidia in Philadelphia. And um, again, if you look really closely, all these tiny tiles to do this picture of William Penn, Philadelphia, as you know, is in Pennsylvania, the state of Pennsylvania, and uh, William Penn, named for William Penn, who has a document, a very important uh, contract uh, holding the charter of Pennsylvania and um, that establishes the laws and rights and authority of the state. And all of these are important symbols. And it's just beautiful, isn't it? So here's a picture of where it resides. So I was telling you, de these mosaics de decorate important floors and walls. And this one is in a, a train station in Penn Station to decorate beautifully the hallway in Penn Station in Philadelphia. Maybe someday you or I will go there. That would be kind of cool. So I'm gonna show you a few modern before we get to making our own mosaic. This is someone recent, his name is Gary Drossel, and he does a lot of beautiful work for museums and hospitals and he would get commissioned and paid to do a really beautiful decoration uh, like this. It would take a long time, but he does a lot of fish. And isn't it cool how he's made this look like a, a fish pond with um, swirls of water and the fish look suspended in the water. So cool. And uh, I just, I like this a lot. And he's even got the shadows beneath. Pretty remarkable. All right, this is someone else. Her name is Laurel True, and she's been um, hired to do beautiful work in foreign countries like Africa. And this looks really tropical, doesn't it? All the beautiful flowers. Laurel True. And I think she lives in uh, New Orleans now, but she used to live in California and did a lot of work for different, again, museums, hospitals, important buildings who would like to showcase some beautiful, beautiful art. And now you can get a feeling for how amazing um, this mosaic art can be just really cool. So I'm liking it a lot, all that I've been learning and uh, looking at. So, so here's a, a simpler mosaic that somebody's done. You, maybe you've seen this before where people use masking tape and just do a design. And we've did this even in our uh, young adult section in the library. Maybe you remember seeing that. And then you paint all different colors for the shape that you've chosen. And obviously this is a, a pretty heart. And then either painted or chalk. You can use chalk. So very fun. So I wanted to um, tell you kind of how we're going to do it. And this is a nice example of uh, how a mosaic can work. We're going to do something a little simpler than this cat. But, um, and you can do, you could do this. Um, you could find a picture of a cat. I did this um, earlier. Uh, I found a picture of a cat that I liked. And um, you can see that. And so what you do is you find a shape that you like, and you could even pause our video and you could find a shape that's important to you. Um, there are things like uh, 
maybe a butterfly, maybe um, a star. Um, there are all kinds of shapes that you might really like to portray in your mosaic. Then once you find that shape, you can draw it in a, you know, a bigger size if you would like, and then you will um, cut it in pieces like this cat. And each piece you will um, draw how you're gonna cut it. And then you label the pieces so you don't forget where they go. And um, so I would recommend a shape in that you cut it in anywhere between five and 10 pieces. So that's Mr. Cat. And that gives you an idea of the process of doing a mosaic in uh, using paper or tissue, uh, some pretty colored tissue you could use as well. And then we'll be using our glue sticks for our mortar and pretend, we'll pretend that our uh, papers are tiles. So, so this is the steps that I'm gonna tell you about. You find a shape you really like, a favorite animal, flower, tree, butterfly, etc. And then you trace or draw your shape on uh, construction paper or cardstock. And then you will draw the uh, five or 10 mosaic lines to make the shapes that you want. And then you number them, each mini shape, so you don't lose your way. And then you cut them carefully. And then you can color the shapes with colored pencils using any colors and designs. You could do stripes, you could do polka dots. Uh, and then um, you will prepare a contrasting color background. And then you'll reassemble your shape and glue each mosaic paint part. But like Mr. Turtle, you see, you leave a little space. That's kind of like when you're doing the tiles, you have to leave space for the, the grout or the, the special mortar. So we did, I did this with Mr. Turtle, used all different colored paper and then glued him and left a little space between each of the shapes. And voila. So I am going to show you how to work one now together. So let me do this a little bit. This might help. So here I have a little, uh, a little board, a little cardboard that I wanted to use for my backing. And I've got my handy dandy glue stick and I'm gonna glue away and then put my backing on it. Yeah. And here we go. And the picture that I have chosen to make my mosaic with is a bird. I saw this bird and I liked him. So I thought he would make a great mosaic. So here's the bird. And if you look closely, you can see that my background paper has music notes on it, kind of to symbolize how much we like to hear birds sing. So I'll put this down for a second. And I might work upside down so you can see better. And then I took that bird shape, I traced him, and you can see what I did. And then I drew my lines where I thought would be nice places to cut shapes there. And then I cut it. And I'm going to show you my little pieces. These are my pieces that I cut just like that. And then I cut another one. 
But then these are some of the colored pieces. Let me show you this that I used for, to make my bird. So I'm gonna glue that and show you exactly how I did that. So um, let's start with right here. And I'll put my little head right there. And then the next piece that's part of his head, kind of glue like that. And like I said, I'm leaving a little opening, if you can see that, that adds to that kind of look of the mosaic, kind of artsy. And there's his little beak, and I found some orange paper that actually was cut from a magazine. So you can use all different, you can use solid colors, you can just uh, use your um, markers, you can use your colored pencils, whatever you would like, or you can use um, magazines that have some pretty paper in it that you can cut up. The sky's the limit using your imagination. So here's part of his body. And I'm using this orange for this. And I went the wrong way. Goes like that. And again, I'm, I'm leaving a little space so that you, you see how each piece gets laid out. Yeah. And here's another one. Here's going this way. So, and on and on. So you see how each of the pieces are coming together. And I want to show you, um, I did this ahead of time, and this was the result. And then I used a little marker to um, give him a little eye. And voila, this is a mosaic little bird that was really fun to do. So I showed you the cat. I also did a fish. I saw a fish that I liked and I um, cut it traced it and cut it. And you can go back and look at the slide on the recording to see the instructions again. And then I had some water paper and I just cut it up in different designs and just used it like you would the tile. And I just had fun with it. It's very relaxing to do. You know, you could listen to a storybook on tape while you do it. So it's very, very fun. So I hope that you have the opportunity to make a mosaic yourself and uh, just enjoy making a puzzle of art like this. And this has inspired me so much that I'm um, thinking I'm going to actually try using tiles you can buy um, or have broken china that you can use. And I went to Lowe's and got some grout. And uh, I'm thinking of making some Christmas presents and doing the tile on top for gluing down roof 
on um, some little bird houses to give them a pretty little roof for Christmas presents. So you'll have to come in and ask me if I actually got it done. So it's yet to be seen, but that's my hope. So I hope um, this has inspired you. I hope you enjoy. And there may be places that you go when you're traveling or going to um, our capital, our nation's capital or other places. And you'll see places that are filled with uh, mosaics that um, sometimes are very old and incredible. And you can see up close um, how important. I wanted to show you, we have some really wonderful books about mosaics in the library. This one, and this one's all little pebbles, pebble mosaic handbook. And this one's really great because it shows all manner of different mosaics here. Here's a seashell. And um, some of them are just designs like this. Um, that you can do, the sky's the limit, but it shows you step-by-step step how to do it with um, the right equipment if you're using real tile or uh, rocks. I also was thinking of getting, if you get at Lowe's, one of those stepping stones, you can also put mortar on it and put a design of your um, rock, special rocks that you've collected and sea glass and um, little uh, round uh, different colored glass that you can even get at the Dollar Tree and make really pretty designs. So I hope you've enjoyed this little um, foray for our aspiring artists and I do look forward to being able to be together for those projects again one day. But until then, I hope this has been um, uh, an inspiration for you to try a new form of art. Have a great day.